is up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And this beautiful woman with me right here is Dr. Randasso, who also happens to be my mom. Say hi, mom. <laughs> hi, Chris. Yeah, so she, uh, she might go by Carrie, but to me, she's mom. Uh, but yeah, anyway, some of you, or a lot of you, saw my video I just did uh, about suicide awareness with Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain passing uh, passing away in the last week. Um, but my mom, uh, mom, tell them a little bit about what why, why you're a doctor. What do you specialize in? Uh, well, I, mean, I have a doctor degree in clinical psychology, but I specialize in addiction for the last 20 years. Yeah. So my specialty is treating addiction and other mental illnesses. Yeah, so basically we want to hop on today because something that – isn't coming up enough like we we see suicide and things like that but like both kate spade and anthony bourdain struggled with addiction and more and more news is coming out and we wanted to talk about this because there's a there's a huge lack of awareness when it comes to addiction especially when it comes to alcoholism all right like a lot of people when they think addiction they're thinking oh the opioid epidemic the yes that is a huge problem but you must understand that tens of thousands of people each year are dying from alcoholism and i think this is a perfect example too about how the statistics are kind of screwed up you know what I mean like it doesn't necessarily say they they died of alcohol poisoning it's a result of alcoholism leading to depression leading to suicide like can you talk a little bit about um, what how or, alcoholism leads to suicide well at the end of the day you could have depression before you have alcoholism or even abuse let's even just go alcohol abuse and I don't think it's about non-awareness I think it's starting to get to me I'm getting frustrated because I think it's about denial uh, I think everybody's educated about oh we shouldn't drink or do drugs too much and be an addict but it's okay to self-medicate a little bit mm. I mean I cannot tell you how many how much frustrated I am that Nobody is shocked in the field of addiction that Anthony Bourdain and Katie Spade hung themselves. We're not shocked. Yeah. If you're abusing alcohol, whether you're diagnosed as an alcoholic or not, and you're struggling with depression or anxiety, the likelihood that you're going to eventually harm yourself, harm somebody else, is extremely high. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? And, and a lot of people, like I've shared it multiple times on my channel when talking about my story, like... Like, especially with my drinking and my using, I got to a point where even though I wasn't going to kill myself, I wanted to die. And that's something else that we see where people just drink themselves to death. You know what I mean? Um, but something else, like when we're talking about like the depression, like, uh, you know, did depression come before or did depression come afterwards? Like... It, it can be either way. Like some people self-medicate with alcohol, but then alcohol, um, long-term abuse of it can also start to make you feel more depressed, right? Right. It doesn't matter the chicken came before the egg. That's not that important. What matters is we tell you when you're struggling with any mental illness is stop addictive drugs Why we're trying to treat the mental illness. Yeah. So, uh, so Kate Spade, it came out that Kate Spade, her and her husband, you know, they, they were separated and stuff. And part of the reason that he left was because of her drinking. Like, of course. So do you, do you think, especially with like the denial and stuff, like, what about both sides of it? Do you think like the actual alcoholic has denial? Do you think the people around them has denial too? And enables okay, so, them? so I'm not that upset with the alcoholic and the addict, okay? Because it's a mental illness, they're going to be in denial. I am more upset with the people around them mm -hmm. that join in in the denial or turn a blind eye. So at this point, I'm not even looking at Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain. I'm looking at the people that knew these people had histories of abusing substances and and are not confronting, dude, we're not going to drink with you. Dude, we're not yeah. going to have you on our show drinking. Yeah. You're an you're a confessed addict. Yeah. Okay, or you're self-medicating because anxiety disorder mm -hmm. is not appropriate. Right. We're not okay with it. So, okay. so let's let's talk about this real quick. A lot of people watching my channel are not addicts and alcoholics. Like, what what should a person do? Like, what should a loved one do if they see the person is has a drinking problem? We're not uh, make boundaries, clear set, loving boundaries. Uh, we're not going to drink when we're around you. Mm -hmm. I, I I have a case right now that just blows me away, but I could go on for hours. <laughs> you, I'm not going to drink around you. 
Mm-hmm. We're not we're not a drinking family. I'm not okay with you drinking when we go to a restaurant. It's got to be a theme. This is an illness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, it's not okay. It's like in our family, Christopher. When we have Thanksgiving, we just don't have booze or alcohol around, right? Yeah. We yeah. don't have big family functions because of it, but it's a loving gathering because we all know there's no need for it. Yeah. And, and like, especially like when we look at like celebrity culture too, like it's everywhere with the partying and the lifestyle and yes. stuff like that. So, so yeah, it's difficult for them to even avoid situations where, where there's not going to be alcohol. You know what I okay, mean? Okay. But let me, let me say this. I get that all the time. Like Carrie or Dr. <laughs> Randazzo, they're going to be around booze anyway. They're going to be, it's all over the place. Yeah. But my home and my family is my castle. Yeah. They're my safe net. They're my love. I don't care if I go to a friend's house and they have alcohol, I have a right to leave. Yeah. But in my family, in my home, yeah. And you guys know I could die and you're still sitting around drinking next to are you insane? Right. I mean, is something wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah, no, and that's that's the thing too. So something I've I've heard of um is like sober sober coaches, sober companions and stuff like that like do you think, if, like, especially celebrities and stuff, like, they should hire somebody, like, if they have to go to parties or events or whatever, you know, like Kate Spade, she was a fashion designer and stuff, and go, like, do should they hire somebody yes. to go with them? Well, I think that just like in, in our 12-step programs, there's 12-step programs, we have people that are in recovery. Yes, I believe in sober coaching. Yeah. They have to have somebody that understands yeah. near them. Yeah, because, yeah, that was, that was uh, part of the issue was, like, even if friends and family members cut me off and, you know, they wouldn't hang out with me or they wouldn't drink around me and stuff like that, I go to plenty of events where people didn't know. Like, people didn't know that I had a problem, so I, I could yeah. drink all willy-nilly around them and stuff. Right, but, but that's another issue that therapy and counseling can, can, can cover, okay? So, yes, yeah. you're right. But Anthony Bourdain was on TV drinking as he's going to these cultural events, mm-hmm. and everybody, CNN, knew he was a drug addict. Yeah. In the twenties. So yeah, so yeah, so, let's, come on. yeah, let's talk about that real quick. Cause this is something this is something that I deal with with my clients all the time too. Like all the time. They there is this lack of understanding that just because you were addicted to heroin doesn't mean you won't have a problem with alcohol. I tell them all the time. I see people come in. They come in for meth. They come. In, they come back for alcohol. They come in for pain pills. You know. They come back for benzos. You know. Like we bounce from one thing to another because at the end of the day, addicts and alcoholics, we have a problem dealing with life, and we find anything and all sorts of toxic behaviors to do things. For some people, it's gambling. For some people, it's sex. For some people, it's shopping. You know what I mean? But like. Can you talk a little bit to that? Like Anthony Bourdain was a recovering heroin addict and you shared an article on Facebook where Anthony Bourdain says this, and this is something that you and I in the addiction field have to fight through every single day where people say, I'm a special case. I'm a special case. Not many people can quit right. heroin. Not right. many people can quit heroin and drink alcohol, but I'm I'm special. I'm different. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like going from one substance to another why that doesn't work well because it's so funny when he said i'm an unusual case no dude at the end of the day you weren't unusual at all it's a physiological issue it's a neurological issue yeah located in the mesolimbic system so anthony bourdain could say whatever he wanted Mm -hmm. but we as scientists and clinicians we know anthony bourdain you have the same neuro pathways, the same structures that every other human being has. So the likelihood you're going to play this off and be unusual is pretty slim. Yeah. Well, yeah. And like, you know, I, I've done this thing and maybe it's because uh, my dad has diabetes. Like I, I relate addiction to diabetes a lot. Like, could you imagine if a diabetic was like, no, I just can't eat cake, but I'm a special case and I can eat a bunch of candy bars. Like it doesn't, it? it doesn't make sense. Cause <laughs> like you're saying, this is a physiological thing. And like, that's something that I try to, you know, explain to clients. Like I do a lot of groups on the brain science of this thing. I'm like, you react I differently know. to this substance. Like, um, I love, you know, um, even though like there's a lot of anti-12 step 
people out there. Like, I love in the doctor's opinion where it relates it to an allergy. That's when it first clicked for me. I'm like, oh, it's like an allergy. Like, what kind of lunatic would go and eat peanuts, have an allergic reaction, and then be like, oh, okay, well, it's just these peanuts. I can go have those peanuts. Like, nobody in their right mind would do that, but for some reason with addiction it is. And, like, it makes sense to me. Alcohol, even, you know, recreational drug use, it's so encouraged by society and things like that. Like, it, it makes sense that people, you know, they try to, they, they go into this denial. But something I also teach about is the problem with the prefrontal cortex. And the prefrontal cortex is there for logical decision making. You know what I mean? So, like, <laughs> like I, I'm going to do a video this week on this, but, like, that's one of the number one reasons for relapse is because people are incapable who have addictions of making these logical decisions. They need someone to guide them. They can't do this with their own thinking. Right, but then we have a society and family members that, that have this distorted thinking too, so they're making them sicker. And yes, yeah. I always hear, you can only get sober and want to get sober for yourself, but I am a big proponent that we don't live on an island alone. Right, yeah. So I am holding a lot of other people responsible for these deaths that I see. Yeah. Sorry, I do. <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you think... Do you think that um, there's a lot of people out there who need to get sober or want to get sober, but their families, like families or friends, purposely enable them because it might mean they have to change what they're doing? Like, Let me tell you, the worst thing I see, the worst thing I see in my profession, and trust me, I consult on a weekly basis with families, is that everything has to change and they're not ready to go to any length. I have wives that, that want their husbands to change, but they will not change. They're drinking every, you know, wine at the house three times yeah. a week, but they're adamant that their husband shouldn't drink. What do they expect? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. This takes a commitment from the family, from everybody. And guess what? We are self-centered human beings at our core. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, it's, it's We're self-centered, human... selfish, and yeah. it's all about us. Yeah. And it's this, this End human... End of the day. This human issue. It was so funny. Here, I'm going to tell you a funny story real quick. Okay, you don't you read did. my comments. And some other people didn't read my, don't read my comments. But I made a video the other day, and I was discussing this. I said, you know, by nature, we're selfish and self-centered. We immediately think of ourselves. We of do course. this. We do this on a subconscious level. We don't even realize it. So I say that statement, and this guy replies in the comments. He's like, how dare you say that we're all selfish and self-centered? Not all of us only think about ourselves. I'm like, dude, no <laughs> disrespect, but you literally just proved my point. When you saw it. <laughs> When you saw me say that, you immediately thought of yourself. You think everything is directed towards you. Everything is about you. <laughs> like, and and this is this is a massive issue. So so here's the thing. Like going back to Kate Spade, Anthony Bourdain, but anybody else out there who is either struggling with addiction and wanting to get clean, or knows somebody who should get clean. Like, let's talk about this. Do is it a necessity? Is it an absolute necessity that you need your family support in order to get sober? I don't like absolutes, Chris. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nothing's absolute. All right. Mm -hmm. It sure makes it a lot nicer. And I think the, the recidivism rate for relapse is less. Mm -hmm. But is it ultimately has to be? No, of course not. But come on, you have to have a support system. And it's, it, there's a high likely you need the people around you. We know that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what, what should a person do who doesn't have a supportive family? If they're, they, if they're from a family, if they, if they live in a house, let's say it's a mom, dad, a sister, and a brother, the brother okay. wants to get sober, everybody in that house drinks and uses, what should that person do? Everybody uses. Then that's where we get the person to attach to a support group of clean and sober individuals. Like what? Like what? <laughs> so we're going to go there right now? Yeah, let's do it. We're going to go there right now? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, of course, a 12-step program. You have Alcoholics Anonymous. You have Narcotics Anonymous. Yeah. You have Smart Recovery. Mm -hmm. Let me pick up where she left off, because this is something that's going to be the theme Sorry. of this week. Oh, don't apologize. It's just your internet connection. But uh, this is going to be a theme this week because um, I've been doing weekly topics on the YouTube channel. This week, I'm going to be talking a lot about 12-step programs and things like that. So this is one of my issues when it comes to doctors and scientists and people like that who 
dislike support systems, dislike support groups and things. They say, oh, you just need this type of therapy, that type of therapy. Here, just take naltrexone. Here, just take antabuse. Um, you know, uh, do transcranial magnetic stimulation. Like, people don't realize that, first off, first off, just saying those things, 12-step programs are free. I don't know if people got the memo, but a lot of addicts and alcoholics have destroyed themselves financially. Most of them don't have insurance. So unless you're going to, like, federally fund people to get transcranial magnetic stimulation, you need to step off. But the second thing is, so many people do not have supportive family members. They don't have that supportive family, so they need to get involved. And I tell people, I don't care what program you work, just work a program. Go to 12-step meetings, go to Smart Recovery, Refuge Recovery, I love that. But these are people who will be there to love and support you when the people who raised you and the people you grew up around will not do the same. You know, so it, abs it I'm sorry for that little rant, but it just drives me nuts when people try to talk down on these support systems. But hang on, Chris, mm -hmm. we all know that not one, we call uh, different treatments modalities. Mm -hmm. Never do you just use one modality. So even with magnetic stimulation, you always have to add another thing with it. Oh, yeah. You never just have one thing by itself. Yeah. Okay. It's not, you always uh, add a, a plethora of different types of treatments yeah. Yeah. for addiction. Yeah. Let's let's talk about this real quick too, because it's gonna help with the topics I'm gonna talk about this week. <clears throat> so, with with the vast majority of people struggling with addiction, having a, a mental illness as well, a uh, dual diagnosis, like, do you feel that people, even if they do fully embrace a 12-step program or Smart Recovery or Celebrate Recovery or Refuge Recovery, they should also be seeing a therapist or psychologist and things like that? They need to be assessed for their for the other. We call that a dual diagnosis. So you want to make sure what that other diagnosis is, and that needs to be treated in addition yeah. to their twelve step program. Yes. Yeah. No, it was really interesting. I, I might do a video on this sometime. I was watching this video about this guy. He actually he lost two sons to suicide, and he was. Um, I don't know if you've heard of like that low dose ketamine treatment for depression. Um, but like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that freaks me out. But they do it once every six weeks, and they like these doctors were really good. They said this is not a fix, this is not a cure. You need to go go do psychotherapy as well. You know what yeah. I mean? Like this, like basically the ketam the low dose ketamine treatment is to get you to a place where you're not feeling suicidal, where you're open up, kind of like what you do with um, uh, what's the thing? But neurofeedback. You know, getting yeah. them to a place where they can start. Um, where other things start working even better. You know? Right, and I don't let anyone do neurofeedback by itself. In fact, I won't treat people unless they're doing counseling or 12-step program or medication management. I won't do neurofeedback because I won't take their money like that. Yeah. It won't work. Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, everybody, we're... Are you there? Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, mom, let's let's wrap this up. I'm gonna do an outro and stuff. The internet's being weird, and my phone, my battery's about to die. But uh, anyways, anyways, everybody, we're gonna wrap this thing up. And thank you, mom, for coming and talking about this very serious subject. So yeah, everybody, if you've been paying attention, if you need help, go get help with or without your family. If your family's not supportive, have them watch this video and and have them support you and help you out. They can go to a therapist, they can go to Al-Anon, and all sorts of stuff. What what am I missing here, Mom? What can the family do, or what should people do if they need to get help? Well, the family can get a consultation with an addiction treatment center. Yeah. A consultation, uh, again, Al-Anon, support, there's, there's other support groups in addition to Al-Anon for family members, mm -hmm. but I would say if they need help, they can call a treatment center to find out what they can do. Oh, got it, cool cool stuff everybody but yeah and feel free to reach out to me on instagram at the rewired soul or twitter at the rewired soul or email me the rewired soul at gmail.com if you need resources to go out and get that help but again mom thank you thank you so much for joining me you're beautiful and lovely as always all right <laughs> but everybody we're out of here and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and we'll see you later